inevitable. You mean you have to use your hands? That's like a baby's toy. I'm totally Batman. Oh, man. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> Communing with your spirits. Welcome to California, bud. Kawabunga. The world of magic. And after that, I just sort of space out for about an hour. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Secondary Heroes Podcast. We're kicking off our special edition of our trailer reaction videos with the brand new Kenobi series coming to Disney Plus on May 25th, and they have a new teaser trailer for us to react to today. This is your host, Trevor, and joining me as usual is... It's DeLorean Wolfgang. And we have a couple special guests joining us this week. Hello, my name is Alicia Kenobi. <laughs> and I am her father, Vic Simon. <laughs> <laughs> nice! How perfect is that? You couldn't ask for better. <laughs> you gotta do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> so, uh, Vic and Alicia are uh, close personal friends of mine, and I know that they are massive Star Wars fans. I mean, yeah. they have done their due diligence when it comes to Star Wars. So if you guys want, tell us a little bit of your background on Star Wars. How, like Vic, I know that you collect some major uh, Star Wars originals, toys, and all that stuff. Yeah, I'll just let you guys take take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Star Wars. I mean, it's, it's probably one of the first things I can really remember as a child. I mean, I, I saw the movie in the theater, you know, in 77. I was like four. And uh, yeah, it's yeah, like it's probably one of the first things I really, really remember in my life. And so uh, it's kind of just been with me the whole time. I've gone through probably everything that everyone talks about in terms of Star Wars fandom, everything from being the little kid that bought the toys and the commercials and, you know, saw all that stuff and played in the schoolyard with the actual toys, waiting for the new Return of the Jedi movie to come out, you know, that type of thing going to its downfall where you didn't even talk about Star Wars. It didn't even matter. People would be made fun of you if you had a Star Wars shirt on and stuff. And then seeing it come back up uh, through the 90s. And, uh, you know, both my, Alicia and my older daughter, Ashley, are also big Star Wars fans. And so getting to take them and have them experience it as well and just seeing the resurgence of it and the growth, the prequels, the sequels, you know, the theme park, everything. I mean, we just, it's just all been a big journey for me, but it's like, it's always been there for me in one way or another. And it's awesome to be a part of it, you know? Nice. And and obviously you passed it down to your daughters and Alicia. I mean, <laughs> having that being passed down to you, I mean, at first were you like, oh, this is weird. Or were you just, <laughs> you just took to it? No, not really. I, I kind of always um, enjoyed everything Star Wars. Like, even when I was little, um, I used to watch The Clone Wars when it was still airing um, on, uh, was it Disney XD? I think it was Disney, yeah. It, yeah, it was uh, Disney XD, I think, at the time. And I um, I still have, like, some funny Snapchat memories of me using, like, the filters on the characters or whatever. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and so... Yeah, it's kind of just always been a part of my life, obviously, with him collecting stuff. And I remember we'd always throw, like, parties um, for him on his birthdays. And we'd always put out, like, Star Wars <laughs> decorations. I always remember that. Um, and then in the past couple of years, like, with The Mandalorian and um, with The Bad Batch uh, and Book of Boba Fett, it's just kind of come back a lot for me. And so it's, like, a it's a different kind of... Um, it's it's different than when I was little for sure. It's more of like an uh, an obsession, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. so. yeah, oh, trust me, I follow your Instagram. Your stories <laughs> are heavy in yeah. Star Wars. Pretty much mm -hmm. Friday Night Freddy's or whatever. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big collector. Um, ooh, other way. Um, I have a bunch of Funkos and stuff there, and in front of me there's an insane amount of figures uh, <laughs> and posters and stuff. Um. But yeah, it's always been a big part of my life. So, and I'm super excited for the Kenobi trailer and for well, the show. 
<laughs> well, this is funny because you mentioned parties and stuff like that. I actually went to one of you guys' parties. You guys did an 80s party not too long ago yeah. for your birthday, Alicia. And that was I brought my DeLorean. And I tell you what, man, <laughs> that was that was a really fun party. That was, I really enjoyed it. For, for me, too. Time. I was not expecting that at all. And it was like um, that being such a difficult year for me and my family and for, well, for everyone um, with the pandemic and stuff, it really... It, it was able to help me a lot. Um, got like, just, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Just something about that was like kind of inspiring in a way. I don't really know how, but oh. uh, it just cool. was. I got, I'm so, glad I got to be a so part of that. Thank you for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very cool. Now, we're about to get into the Obi-Wan Kenobi tra trailer. And Trevor, you said you haven't watched it yet? No, I don't like trailers. If you were like, oh, if you didn't say let's do a video, I would not watch the trailer. I would just be ready for May 25th and just see what happens. But here we go. I mean, it's not like you can get spoiled at this point, can you? It's amazing what they put in trailers. Yeah, yeah but do you, do you sit there and you remember it? No, luckily I've forgotten most of the Doctor Strange trailer at this point. So hopefully exactly. same for this one. <laughs> yeah. Now, you guys, Vic and Alicia, you guys have already watched it, right? And I believe you mm -hmm. mentioned that you've already kind of did a deep dive analyzing. He's it overanalyzed as well. it. I've overanalyzed yeah. it. So. <laughs> Perfect. So, this is going to be great having you guys on and chatting about it. It's a big yes. part of the fun, you know? It's mm -hmm. like we don't really know what's going to happen. You kind of see it. And the whole point of a trailer is to kind of entice you, but kind of also fool you. And so, like, just getting to try to discover what's there i mean we did it with the boba fett show too it was like we saw stuff and we're like this is gonna happen this is gonna happen some stuff did some stuff didn't but the fun was in speculation and mm -hmm. so we had a lot of fun just thinking about stuff and seeing it either happen or not it's like just all kind of you know part of the yeah. whole part of the uh, experience so well before we get into the trailer i am curious what did you guys think of boba fett the book of boba fett <laughs> do you want to go first <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, I, I'm the kind of fan, like, I, I'm a, you know, Star Wars is kind of my thing when it comes to that type of stuff. So I enjoy everything that comes out for Star Wars, you know, like, yeah, there's things that I like more than others. But like, I'm not gonna hate on stuff. It's like, I'd rather watch Star Wars and something else. And so anything that comes out and I get the opportunity, I'm gonna have fun with it. Uh, the Boba Fett one, I mean, just like anything else, like, I mean, it had its high points, its low points. Um, I, don't, I didn't hate any, any of it. I thought when it first came out, I mean, it was very, um, we were way into it. I mean, it was like the whole process of it was very exciting, like just getting to see him and he came out of the Sarlacc pet, just all stuff that like even myself being such a fan for such a long time, you just dream about this kind of stuff. And so getting to see that and getting to see him go through the whole, you know, just seeing the Tusken Raiders I and mean, all that kind of stuff, you, you see those things for like, you know, minutes at a time when you're a kid, you know, in the original movies. And so to see them actually fleshed out in a show, like, and seeing their, that they're actually, there's a, a human side to certain characters. Like, it was just super awesome. There are some moments of the Boba Fett show where it kind of straight off and, and it felt like they were trying to introduce different characters and stuff that, you know, we kind of, it felt like it was going somewhere and then it kind of didn't finish it. You know, you just sort of like kind of sprinkled in there. And then the show kind of, split off into different directions but ultimately i mean there is so much coolness in it that i i mean i i enjoyed it probably more than other people but i didn't like you know it wasn't like my favorite thing of all when it comes right. to star wars but yeah I, I mean i'd rather would be watching that than a bunch of other stuff that's out so way more than watching falcon and winter soldier that's <laughs> That's my take. <laughs> I, I get so much hate on YouTube every time I mention Falcon and Winter Soldier and how much we don't like it. <laughs> but yeah, if, if you're listening to this or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go check out that entire series. We actually went through every episode of Book of Boba Fett and you can listen to our takes of Book of Boba Fett. Uh, Vic, I kind of wish we would have had you on for some of those episodes because, man, you... I mean, to have your background uh, in looking at that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, and you know, that, that's another thing, too. It's like I felt so much of it because I, I, I know it, you know, and I know it with such a history. So it's like 
it must be different, you know, for people that aren't as familiar. And so if the story beats aren't there and it's not, it's not as exciting. I mean, there's, there was excitement because you get to see things that you just, you put together in your head and you're like, oh, that was that, you know? And so there's a different kind of excitement when you do know certain things than having to Google it and kind of, oh, okay, now I get it. But then it's not, you know, it's not as cool because it, it didn't trigger that moment in your head when you first saw it spontaneously so well and that's that's why i have this podcast because i get trevor and Prague who tells me what <laughs> these things are so it's fantastic <laughs> but i think at this point we should probably get to the trailer but actually before we get to the trailer let's do some social medias hey you could check us out over on cross the streams media.com that's cross the streams media.com you can find all of our social medias you can find our youtube you can find anything and everything you get hey if you want to be a part of the show you can leave us a voicemail <laughs> actually we did just have a voicemail from john big john thank you for your voicemail we're when we do our three-year anniversary episode we will definitely be putting that in thank you so much for calling in uh big john but anyways if you don't want to go to cross the streams media you can check us out at secondary heroes everywhere that's facebook twitter instagram we don't have a TikTok. Don't expect us to do any dances. <sighs> or whatever that is. I don't know. I've been doing that a lot lately for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, but just remember, all of this is free for you. It's priceless to us. Now let's get to this trailer. Trevor, do you want to count us down to hit the play button? Sure. So if you're watching at home, you can follow right along with us. I'll hopefully audibly gasp at something that maybe potentially be exciting. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but in two, so we'll go three, two, one, play. Sons of Tatooine. Of course, we're back in town. The fight is done. We lost. more traveling through the sands of Tatooine. Always. <laughs> Stay hidden. It's fun to come in with your face. The key her. to hunting Jedi is patience. Jedi cannot help what they are. Their compassion leaves a trail. What's the same one? The Jedi it code like is it. like an itch. He cannot help it. Where is he? It's cool they're doing Inquisitors. I'm not gonna lie, I got goosebumps. I do. Same. <laughs> there's certain there's certain Still. scenes in that where I do get goosebumps. I no. I, I mean it. it's the score. We just did that two episodes ago talking about how I, impactful the score is and Duel of the Fates, man. Love the score. You're absolutely right. It is the <laughs> score that is giving me those goosebumps, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I loved it. I, I love the trailer. Oh, awesome. Okay, so Trevor, since this was your first time. What are some of your just immediately thought or immediate thoughts on this? So the big thing is that it's more Dave Filoni having the impact of all that animated stuff. I'm going to throw live action. And so we have a few different Inquisitors from the Rebels period, but also yeah. it has a little bit of a Jedi Fallen Order to not necessarily like the video game should be canon, but I don't know, like we had BD1 in Book of Boba Fett. So mm -hmm. we could potentially get Cal Kestis at some point to at least see what Obi-Wan's doing. Oops. I don't know if they'll tie Ahsoka into the show. We'll we'll see. 
just because she has her own series, but she's making appearances all the time. And I think the the best part is it's Tatooine just because we know Obi-Wan has to oversee Luke for 20 years. But in the meantime, he still has a bunch to be hunted for those 20 years and not just hiding in a cave. That, I mean, that's a ton of fun because in expanded universe stuff, most of it is him kind of like fighting Tusken Raiders and just being relatively on Tatooine. It's fun that now we can be like, oh, that Rebels time period when they're hunting down Jedi, they actually came close to thinking that Obi-Wan's still out there. Do you guys have anything to add to that? Because I, I have no idea what you just said. I get that Obi-Wan's top, I, everything yeah, I, else is above my head. I think <laughs> you, you definitely know your, your Star Wars. I mean, you, you hit on so many points there in terms of like, mm-hmm. I mean, what they're really doing. Like you, you see them expanding the animation, which seems to be working because they did it in the other series with Ahsoka. You know, like, it almost seemed like before that, or you know, they were kind of afraid, or even before Rogue One, they were afraid to sort of start sprinkling in the animated stuff. They kept it very separate, you know, it was like animation and and like, but then you started to see like, like Chopper and, you know, certain characters from the cartoons kind of make little tiny cameos in the background. It was like, oh, did you see the ship, you know? But now you're you're actually seeing live action versions of those cartoons. And it's exciting on a whole other level because it's like, there's a lot of like young people that grew up watching the cartoons, you know, like kids, uh, Alicia was a kid and then now she's like older and she she got to see these things and now she's seeing them live action. And so, you know, it's like, and they're exploring the characters or expanding their mythology at, at that point too. So like getting to see that and them embracing it now, like now it's like there, like you're, that, that trailer right there showed so much of things that people aren't gonna really get yet. And they probably won't unless they go back and watch. But these characters are going to live on because now, now you see them in live action. So now everybody knows who and what they are. And so, like, you know, it doesn't really matter whether they saw them or not, when the cartoon or not. It's like now they're they're living, you know, within the live action. And they're, they're very powerful characters, too. I mean, they're pretty strong. That's why they bring them in. But, yeah, like, there's so much stuff to catch there. I mean, and th- that's probably my main thing, too, that I felt that, that was probably the thing that I saw the most of is how it's u- utilizing that. It's not just Obi Wan sitting in a desert, you know, going through the same stuff that um, Boba Fett just did. You know, it's like Tuskins and fighting off, you know, gangs and stuff. It's like it's actually going to it's e- exploring the the universe by bringing in these these other kind of characters that were created in animation. Just yeah, super- um, I definitely agree with the whole Dave Filoni, um, <laughs> he's a god. Uh, he's he a, definitely- Whoa, hold on. <laughs> Dude wears a cowboy hat. I don't know how god that is, but okay, please continue. Um, I definitely think Dave Filoni has such a huge uh, influence and impact on um, my generation, and especially for the kids who I feel like didn't connect with the sequels, which I know a lot of them didn't, um, just looking at like toy sales and like, it's definitely going in the right direction for sure because I mean I remember watching Rebels and like the Inquisitors were always really intimidating and scary and <laughs> I love seeing villains just come back and just just kick ass like it's it's always the best and especially um, them being in the cartoons at first and then it's just even scarier um, and so I that's definitely what I'm the most excited for too is seeing uh, these characters that were originally in Rebels and the Clone Wars come back um, for a redemption arc, or this is before, but you know, <laughs> so excited right. about that. I, for myself, I know that this show is going to be probably a lot on Tatooine, but they yeah. do show, at least in the trailer, they're showing a lot of off, off Tatooine. We're yeah. seeing water worlds. We're seeing lit up cities. We're seeing different things than rather the same sand and two suns and the same crap we've been seeing for so many years now. Mm -hmm. Like in a galaxy far, far away where we can travel to other planets. Why are we sitting on one planet the whole time? That's why I'm glad to finally start seeing some of these other planets. And that's, that's exciting to me. Yeah. Even in the, the Boba Fett episode with Mandalorian, like, 
just that that one like where it was off world like that's like the one everyone seemed to it like the most. It was a sigh of relief. I know. I, there's a green tree. There's grass. <laughs> there's water. Oh my right. god! No wonder Anakin hates sand. <laughs> yeah. We get it now we understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I know that you guys did any uh, deep dives. Was there anything like? Was there? anything like that really stuck out to you where you were like wow i can't wait to see more of that right there i mean in terms of the things that we were analyzing and we'll probably get into that but yeah. just in general <laughs> the things that we kind of know that that you you put together i mean one of the things like you said uh it looks like uh, obi-wan goes like off world off of tatooine which is Definitely, if you put it together, if you really rewatch the trailer, you can kind of see that he is in other environments, and he's using a blaster. I think mm -hmm. that's who that is. I mean, it, it's I'm pretty sure that's who the that beard, is. You know, I'm <laughs> shooting a blaster, which makes sense because he would have to be hiding his, his identity, so he can't. Use, yeah, we were talking about this earlier too. We were talking about how Obi Wan, uh, you know, they can sense each other through the Force. Mm -hmm. So Obi Wan, and that's 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 what makes him strong, right? He's like a Jedi, and he has you know Jedi powers, and he's and it, what's his main weapon? His lightsaber, you know, and he can't use any of this. As a matter of fact, he has to probably close himself off from the Force, much like Luke did in the in the sequels, because yeah. uh, otherwise the Sith will find him. And so Obi Wan is very he's very exposed, and he's very just stripped down because he can't be the Obi Wan he used to be, or else he'll be discovered. So he can't use the saber. He can't. He probably ha can't use the force at all, or else they'll they'll detect him. So he has to be somebody he never he's never been, which is you know, shooting with a blaster and just completely you know unarmed when it comes to the powers that he has as a Jedi, and which is something I hadn't thought about until this point. Now we see it, and it's like, wow, that's really intriguing. It's an intriguing concept that like you'd know somebody as probably one of the most badass Jedi you know, or just characters within the mythology that we watch within movies, but now you have them stripped down and we know the story. We know what happened to Obi-Wan and we know that he hid away and he, you know, he was this desert hermit, but now you're seeing him in action, but you're seeing a whole other dimension of him because he has to utilize other forms. I mean, seeing him with a blaster, I think he might've used one in the, in the prequels. I think he might've used a blaster as a joke at some point or another, but <laughs> I, I, he used it and it goes <laughs> just I, kidding <laughs> doesn't he do that i i maybe, maybe, no, maybe um, i think it's when he shoots general grievous's heart he uses a blaster yeah, does he use, okay yeah so so i'm right so it's like we've seen it but yeah. but it wasn't like like a you know now he's kind of like disguised himself as as an everyday guy and so he's like shooting a blaster and like he's probably not as efficient with it as he is with a with a lightsaber right and you know yeah. I, just the, the vulnerability of him is probably really really going to show which is which is cool you know absolutely definitely um, the interesting aspect is the same time period over and over and over and over and over and over and again we we same got this time period years mm -hmm. we got right it here, we, we man. know it fully and so that's why i was like okay i don't know about this series and it's really interesting because when you take it just from the original trilogy this time period should be relatively boring but now all these different things that Dave Filoni has worked on, he's like, Darth Vader wasn't just by himself. The whole rule of twos of Sith with the Emperor and Darth Vader, that wasn't actually true. He somehow recruited a whole band of dark side users and created all these different Inquisitors and the Second Sister and all these different Ninth Sister, all these different like henchmen or minions that he has at his disposal. They're going full on to actually tie it into the main storyline of Obi-Wan and the Skywalker saga. It's really kind of interesting that they're doing it and then they're doing it with using it seemed like it was a rogue one type of camera filter where like they have essentially different lenses and filters that they use for different shows and movies and this was the most rogue one it looked the grittiest and just like really kind of simplistic it ties into that idea that obi-wan's not going to be a force user and a jedi it's going to be more of rogue one is just a band of non-force users yeah, he's right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I get that too. I, I know exactly. Yeah, and like, and I didn't think about that before. You know, when I thought Obi Wan trailer and they show the sand and you see his hood and his cloak and stuff, and you're just thinking he's wandering the desert and he's just that. But yeah, it's exactly. It looks like they're going into another type of 
adventure. It kind of almost felt like uh, a little bit like Attack of the Clones too, at least the, the world, you know, the Coruscant type of world they were in. It's mm -hmm. like city, dirty, gritty city, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I, I didn't even think it would go there, but now seeing it, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this is going to be really cool because it's like different than what I was thinking. And yeah, it can get kind of old when you think about the same old, <laughs> I mean, we already know the story. So like in our minds, we try to piece it together, but we don't think like this. We think like the way we were told, which is, you know, he sat in a desert and then Vader was the only guy that hunted Jedis. And then they all kind of met in a new hope. But now they're breaking out into these other little subplots. It's like, and why wouldn't there be Jedis that survived? Why wouldn't why wouldn't there be other Sith that they use? I mean, it's a huge a giant galaxy. And mm -hmm. yeah, they would need inquisitors, they would need other kind of like guard dogs and henchmen to go out and do this. And it just it's expanding the lore. And and it's a it seems to be the the actual time, you know, the the uh, era that works best i think because yeah like the prequels were cool but that was like a story that was telling the other story and then the sequels went off on a whole other you know past the characters that we all know but now this time period is the time period everyone everyone can agree on is the, t the most exciting uh, when it comes to star wars so now they they're figuring out ways to make it even more exciting i mean they they did it with the with the clone wars and with the rebels and, sh and those shows i mean they are they did expand but now they bring it into live action. So that's where it makes it, you know, where everyone can kind of get into it instead of only people who watch the animation. I was about to just say, how is this show going to, how is this show going to be for like an everyday fan like myself? Like I didn't watch Clone Wars. I didn't watch Rebels. I didn't play the video games. I didn't do any of that. I watched the original three, the prequels, and then the sequels that's kind of where I'm at. I've watched a few other things. Obviously I've watched Mandalorian. I've watched book, book of Boba Fett. Golly. I've watched a lot of star Wars <laughs> now that I talk well, about it. Well, no, speaking <laughs> of the book of Boba Fett, like when Cad Bane comes in, oh, you, you God. still understand his presence and idea without having to watch in clone wars. Right. I, okay. So I'm not going to lie. I learned about Cad Bane through Alicia's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> she posted probably a thousand different Cad Bane things. I and did. I, was, I did. And I that was, was like, a this great guy moment looks pretty for me. cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then whenever I saw him on screen, I was like, okay, this is someone from the cartoons. I got that. How, really how did you feel when you saw him? Like, okay, not really knowing or experiencing him in the animations. How did you feel when you saw him as a character? Like, I wanted to see so much more of him. I wanted okay, him to yeah. stick around. By him, spoiler alert, he dies in Book of Boba Fett. Lame. I wanted to see this guy. I want to see a whole show all about him, but in live action. I'm yeah. just there's something about I just can't get behind cartoons. I don't want to watch cartoons. I tried watching the movie Clone Wars. Was it oh, not Clone Wars? Yeah, Clone Wars. the movie's that's not, not, the not the best, best sleeping off play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and I was confused because it was like all of a sudden like Yoda's in this spaceship and he's now on this planet where they're trying to protect Yoda and he's like yeah. bouncing around off of trees <laughs> and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, this is not the star Wars I know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that's why I want to know how is this going to be for someone like me who doesn't really know any of these characters? I think the important part about all of this is that the fact that they've kept the, the 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 cartoon characters out, you know, the animated series characters out of it, and just, I mean, they were afraid of bringing them in for the same reason that you bring up. And and it makes perfect sense. It's like, some people look at them as like, oh, that's way too fandom. That's way, like, I don't watch the cartoons. I watch the, you know, the, the movies, the live action. And uh, they're very cautious about it. And so you're not gonna see, like, it's not a continuation of those series. It's just kind of a reintroduction. And they do it in a way where, it doesn't really matter. Like if you don't, if you know the character or not, you don't have to know. Like it, they embody that whole character and persona when they bring them into live action. Like a right. soap. A lot of people that don't know who she was, you might have yeah. not known who she was. But now you're intrigued because you see her and mm -hmm. you're like, who was she? And she was very important. Just the, the small amount of screen time she had, and she was very badass. And so she, um, you know, she's brought in people see her it's and it's kind of a gateway too into the watch maybe watching some of the animation they're like oh, i, I want to see more mm -hmm. of her but even if it's not 
it's like you see her, but and now who is she? I mean, she is a part of the Mandalorian. She's connected to Grogu. She's like moving forward. Like she's important now. She's connecting with Luke and stuff. So now it's like, who cares if you haven't watched the old stuff? If you don't, if right. if you want to go back and watch it, even cooler. But it doesn't matter because she's a part of the universe now. And I think yeah. every other character brought in like this is is going to be done in the same way. The Inquisitors, if you right. haven't seen them in Rebels, doesn't matter because now you're going to know who they are. They're going to do yeah. the same thing in a different way, but you're going to see the same thing. Uh, every character you see introduced from uh, from um, the animation is going to be done in this way, and it just doesn't really you know matter. Like it's not going to be like oh I do I don't know who that is I don't know the backstory. It doesn't matter because they are really careful about that kind of stuff. Right. And I think Cad Bane was a perfect example because, yeah, once you saw the shadow figure and then him start talking, it was like, my God, this guy is amazing. Yeah. And you, you, know, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give you something. No, you can go. Hey, go ahead. I was just wondering if Cad Bane's going to show up in the show because him and Obi-Wan cross over quite a bit in the Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. And he kind of gets yeah, the that. one up on Obi-Wan multiple times. He he saved him in that one arc, but he just didn't know it was him yet. He still thought it was yeah. his killer. Um, so that would be interesting to see an interaction with them again because and here, here's they a good would point too. Beef. Because it all kind of connects now. Okay, so now you, Alex, you you know who Cad Bane is now. So what if he does show up in Obi Wan? Now you're going to be excited because you're like, oh, right. Yeah. Even though you didn't know mm -hmm. of him before, so it, that that's kind of how it continues on. It's like now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you did if you saw him before. Now you know who he is and you liked him. So now, if he does show up in Obi Wan, it's now like you're kind of triggered into that world of like, oh man, I, I see him. I know who he is. Mm -hmm. And I right. think that that's what they're doing with all of this. It's like they're kind of connecting the dots and and reconnecting the dots and just painting a bigger picture, which is Absolutely. super awesome. Now there is one thing that I did notice in this trailer, which I really I thought was really cool, and I I appreciate I, I appreciate it because. Uh, I don't think Star Wars really does it very often. And it's the representation of women. Uh, if you watch the original trilogy, you got Leia and then Aunt May. And that's like about it. <laughs> so, Aunt May. is it Aunt May? Who? No, it's not Aunt May. Spider Man? It's Spider Man. It's Murray. He has Spider Man on the mind. <laughs> What's the I want that crossover, but it's Aunt Peru. <laughs> with the blue hair. Oh my god, yeah, Aunt May and Star Wars. But it just went right over my head. Like I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh Aunt May. Oh as you know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> but no, it's cool because the majority of this trailer, you see female characters and they look like lead characters throughout this whole thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like I'm excited about that. Now I know that we got Ray, but I feel like a lot of people kind of complained about Ray that she yeah. wasn't this or she wasn't that or whatever, mm -hmm. or she was just bland. I liked Ray. I thought she was great. She I was did fun. Too. But mm -hmm. it is cool to see badass women do badass things. Especially as a villain. Like that's so that's so cool. I can't wait to see what she has to bring. Oh my goodness. I can't wait. Thing. <laughs> I, you've got this woman who looks like she's dressed up like Darth Vader without the helmet. And like, I can't wait to see, like she's sli she's sliding across with lightsabers and Oh, looks yeah, good. She looks, yeah, it's awesome. she looks pretty ruthless. She looks pretty yeah. ruthless. And I, I, I think they're holding back in the trailer too. I'm, I'm sure she's going to be like that character for this series. You know, she's probably trying oh, to yeah. prove herself and mm -hmm. she's going to be out there. Like, you know, being a whole other side of, of you know the opposite of heroism you know it's cool yeah at the very start of the trailer or the first time we see the water planet they show the ship flying in and the way they angle it it's the same exact um spires of darth vader's castle on mustafar which is a fun little homage right at the start because it's like first i thought they were panning to that and then they show the water below it and then it leads to the water planet which is pretty much what we see in the climax of Jedi Fallen Order. It looks like it's the same facility where kind of all That's the cool. different Second Sister and Inquisitors and whatever kind of home base. Like the end of Jedi Fallen Order is one of the best horror sequences in Star Wars. Like Darth Vader does one of the best jump scares of all time. So if they <laughs> kind of do anything in the TV show for that. Yeah, that's exciting. 
Yeah, I never played any of those games. So. <laughs> I actually the, just <laughs> just watch the cutscenes on YouTube. It's yes. Funny. Oh yeah, I'm sure that. Yeah, they're... I don't I don't play them either, but I have seen I have seen the cutscenes, and that's kind of how I get caught up on it. Mm-hmm. I, well, I just got oh, go in ahead. Jedi Fallen Order on the PS4 literally today. I ordered it a few days ago, and it just showed up, so <laughs> I'm gonna play it for the first time. Um, but I've seen like the cutscenes and stuff already, but I just I need I need to play it. I need to get into it. <laughs> Oh, it's great. You'll well, we'll They're have to have you guys back on video game universe too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, uh, Star Wars is fun <laughs> because the one other part of like characters that could potentially show up in Rebels, I guess it's a spoiler, but Obi Wan finally kills Darth Maul, and so mm-hmm. he's on Tatooine when he does it. So I could see Darth Maul also showing up in some capacity. They do the play the, the the song, you know. They play the yeah, um, yeah, the Duel of the Fates, and they're always like going to be intrinsically kind of tied. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I really hope so. Especially just because. Darth yeah, Darth Maul. He showed up kind of live action as a hologram in Solo. So it's like the <sighs> whole Crimson Dawn storyline could be like they can make a show of Crimson Dawn, and it would be a fun show with Daenerys doing all kinds of weird, deep, underseated, outer rim Wait, stuff. The, I thought they the were going to do Crimson Dawn. I yeah, thought they Daenerys. were going to do that. In uh, in Boba Fett, I thought they were gonna. Yeah, do I did too. Like, yeah, you kind of you kind of felt mm-hmm. maybe they are, maybe they will explore that later on, but kind of surprising they didn't. I'm sorry, I thought you were kidding. I I thought that there was actually a Star Wars character named Daenerys. Well, Amelia Clark is in <laughs> Amelia Solo. Clark. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It's just easier gotcha. to call her Daenerys. Everyone knows who Daenerys is. That's true. <laughs> but now I've got uh, Game of Thrones in my head, but I can't wait for that new series to come out too. Ooh, so much good stuff coming out. Well, guys. So May 25th. Mark your calendars. You I, ah! I hope you're excited, interested. This trailer gives just enough. Like, again, this the time period, everyone loves Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. So th- yes. that's easy. For and sure. just to actually give some incentive to the show to be more than just always what he's not Luke's babysitter for eight episodes and he's doing the same Boba Fett stuff. He's like, I don't know, get some new black cloak because he goes through their whole <laughs> upbringing as a lizard go up his nose. It, they get yeah. past all of that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, cool, guys. Well, uh, do you guys want to uh, pimp yourselves out a little bit? Uh, where can people find you? I don't know why I said pimp yourselves out as if I was exhibit <laughs> from MTV, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead where can people find you guys uh you guys you can find me on instagram um my main i have an art account and i have like a personal one my art account is art by a saga i don't post much right now but i hope to post more soon once um a project we're working on starts kind of kicking off um and that is honestly pr- oh no i have a i have an etsy shop where i do sell some of my star wars stuff um it's it, it is a saga design one word uh, I have a bunch of Star Wars keychains, like, um, I have mainly Clone Wars stuff, I have Bounty Hunters, uh, lots of Cad Bane um, <laughs> on there, it's for the Book of Boba Fett. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much cool. it for me. Awesome. Yeah, and for me, I mean, there's not a lot of stuff that I can really plug quite yet, but uh, you <laughs> will see a lot more of me soon because we are working on a project i'm actually working on a project with alex and alicia and it's an animation it's an actually like a series that we're developing um and you'll see some sort some form of a couple of short films probably we're looking to release them by maybe october or halloween it's kind of a little bit of a horror uh series but it's it's kind of like for kids but it's also for fan for fandom and it's called the Scaredy Cats, and we all play cats. And you know, it's hard for me to talk about it right now because I can't really show much and say much. But I can can tell you that it's it's really cool. It's really funny. It's really scary. Uh, Alex is a, is a big part of it. We're all a big part of it, and we'll be talking a lot about it as it comes out. It'll be exciting because we're we're going to be showcasing kind of like the making of as it's being you know created because it's it's kind of a homegrown type of an, a series where. Uh, there's going to be Patreon and there's going to be, you know, probably some crowdfunding to get it, you know, to the next level. And so there's a lot of stuff to share. You know, we've already done voiceover sessions. There's we're in the middle of like actually producing the animation right now, which is a whole other level of, of cool. 
But yeah, like I said, as soon as we have some stuff to show, uh, we'll be able to plug it and we'll be, I'm sure, chatting a lot about it. And after oh, sure. it's out, we'll be talking about, you know, the creation of it. But yeah, that's about it for me for right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we'll be featuring you guys heavily when it when it starts getting closer and closer to the date. Yeah, we'll definitely do some more stuff with you guys on here. Oh. Uh, but again, you can always find us at Secondary Heroes. Don't forget that. Awesome. So yeah, again, Kenobi, May 25th. Until then, we'll have, I don't know what we're going to talk about next time, but again, it's our three-year celebration all next week. I don't know what that's going to entail, but be sure to tune in. And also, once Kenobi does air, we're going to have a special guest on who had some kind of connection to the show. So be sure to tune into that after we get to May 25th, because I'm sure we'll talk about the show maybe week by week. I don't know. Hey, if we've got nothing else to talk about, that's the (laughs) easiest thing for us. (laughs) Uh, We hope you enjoyed. We'll talk to you next time. Adios, y'all. Bye-bye.